Hey guys, what's up? Jay Wisp here and welcome to episode 8 of the Minecraft 1.17 Survival Let's Play. Here we are, back. House is looking good, dog's doing good, village is doing good, everything is going very well in this world. And in the last couple of episodes, we've been working on getting ourselves stacked up. Before I start too many build projects or, you know, fight the Ender Dragon, I want to get myself stacked up. I want to have the best armor, the best tools, and the best weapons. So we've been doing a bit of diamond mining. We have some diamonds. We also already have, you know, a full set of diamond armor. We have the grindstone, and we also have a full level 30 enchantment table right over here. I'm curious, though, before I move it, because I'm about to move it, I want to see if I can potentially get a good enchantment on this pickaxe that I de-enchanted. But, in the last episode, we did something pretty cool. We made a super easy but efficient cave spider XP farm. And with that, we now have pretty much unlimited XP. So what I want to do in this episode is work on getting the best armor in the game. That we can. And also, work on a place for our enchantment table. And I was trying to think what I want to do. Normally, I make some sort of mage or wizard enchanting tower type thing. And that always looks really cool, but today I want to try something different. I want to try to make an enchanting cave. So what I'm going to do is take this cave over here and do a bit of landscaping, make it look cool, and then inside we will have our enchantment table. It'll look pretty cool once it's done, but before we do that, I just want to see really fast if we can get a good, encha get a good enchantment on this pickaxe. I can do a few enchantments right now, actually, since I have a decent amount of XP, so maybe I should just bring my grindstone with me. I have enough XP to do two level 30 enchantments, so let's see Basically, the plan for the episode is to enchant really quick, then make the enchantment room, then enchant some more by killing a bunch of spiders at my farm and coming back. And then we have some stuff planned at the end. So, let's see. Let's plant that there. Uh, ooh. Ooh, Fortune 3. Okay. Yo, okay, there we go. We have two efficiency 4 pickaxes. One with Fortune 3. Now, not the best, because we don't have them breaking 3, but Fortune 3 is still super OP in 1.17 because... Fortune 3 works on iron and gold and copper. So let's try the sword next. Let's see if we can get ourselves a good sword enchantment. Unbreaking 3, okay. Let's see what's along. Oh. Well, only Unbreaking 3. But Unbreaking 3 by itself isn't too bad. So what I'm actually going to do is just break this. I do not have a Sook Touch pickaxe yet, so I'm just going to break these bookshelves. But it's okay. I have a ton of sugarcane plus a ton of leather and a ton of wood, so we can just make ourselves some more bookshelves. Now, I really want to work on getting Silk Touch as soon as we can because I also want to work on a beehive sanctuary farm type build because honey is going to be really useful. I can't really do many builds with copper until we have a ton of honey because you use honey to wax the copper and stop it from oxidizing and changing color. So, we got our enchantment table. Let's get some blocks to mess around with this cave to make it look a bit better. All right, so I've gathered a few items in this chest. Nothing crazy yet, but just a few blocks so I can mess around with the entrance for the cave before I do the outside. Basically, this is a pretty big cave, and I want to make it look a little bit smaller. Plus, I want this whole thing to uh, just look a little bit more natural. So we're going to have to be placing a lot of dirt for this to work so uh i don't know i'm just gonna try to maybe flatten out the area a bit and make a bigger entrance for this cave Okay, this is how I'm going to leave the entrance for now, but I will do a little bit of work in a little bit. This doesn't look too great now, but we have to wait for two things. We have to wait for the grass to sort of turn the dirt into grass so it'll look a bit better. Plus, we will plant a few plants around here to make it sort of fit into the landscape, as well as, you know, decorate the outside a bit with some maybe fence posts, some lanterns, things like that. Just things that'll, you know, sort of make it fit in. Alright, so I've added a few fences. I'm not sure I want to keep it like this. I just slept and I've uh, been waiting a bit for some grass to grow. I'm not sure what I want to do. I'll mess around with it a bit later. So, while we're waiting for that, I'll work on the inside. Two things I need to do. I was originally going to put dirt over this entire ceiling, but I think what I'm going to do is just work on the inside and then just make a wall blocking it off. Okay. 
Okay, we got some of the back wall cleared out. So now what I'm going to do is have the same floor that we had, same shape, but replace all this stone and diorite with a little bit of dirt. I actually want the entire ground of this cave to eventually turn into grass. The reason is I want this to be a very lively looking cave. I'm going to have a lot of plants, maybe even a little bit of water here and there. I don't know. We'll have to see how it looks once it's all done. I might need to go grab some more dirt from my chest, but we'll see. Okay, it's starting to definitely come along. So I've done a little bit of detailing. I decided to add that wall in the back. It just made it out of some cobblestone, and I think I might try to maybe round it off a bit. I don't know. I'll mess around with that. Uh, and I also added the entire ground to be grass, just like I said, and I think it looks pretty good. I think it looks pretty good so far. Again, we're going to work on it a bit more. We're not done with it. I also added some cobblestone sort of randomly for a stone look, and I have added some lanterns so that we could get some grass to start growing, and it is spreading quite quickly, so that's really nice. I've been taking a little bit of time here and there to sort of AFK and let the grass grow because I feel like I need the grass to really grow out to really know what I want to do with it. So, now that we have that, before I move on with any more decorating, let's go to... Here we go. I've had to go back to my house a few times, grab some wood here and there, and do stuff like that. But, let's see, where do I want to put this? I think, if I put it right here, that's a good spot. I think this is a good spot. Let me see. This should be all we need, just like that. And then, I only need one bookshelf there, technically, correct? Yes, and then we're at level 30. So I think we'll put it like this, but also putting it like this kind of messes with the whole vibe of the cave. So I've also thought about potentially putting it in the side of the cave, maybe? I think I might do that. I have a feeling that that would look a lot nicer. So, I don't know. Again, just like I keep saying before, let's go just, you know, try out some different things and see what it's like. This is why it's hard for me to build on camera. I need to try out like 20 different designs before I can find one I like, so it's really hard to build for me. All right, my design for the cave is pretty much complete. As you can see, I had just a little bit of cobblestone outside and I have some bone meal and some plants to add inside. But on the inside, I finished my design and I think it looks pretty dang good. So I had to add a lot of lanterns so that we could get the grass to spread and grow. And I think it looks good. Added some path blocks and also some barrels for some lapis lazuli that we can use for enchanting. And I put the grindstone here. And also the good thing about the barrels and the grindstone is that villagers can come inside. The only bad part about that is I guess they tend to get stuck. And uh, I might have to figure out a way for them to get out. But besides that, I did grab a few plants that I thought would be nice. Some sugar cane that we can add just like next to this and I can add some string on top so that uh, it doesn't grow any higher than I want it to so we can do that to put a sort of height limit on it. We can put one maybe right there. And also, where should I put this? We have some glow berries. Now glow berries, same thing as sugar cane. You can actually place a, uh, a string underneath it to make it grow only a certain you know distance. So let's do that. We can use bone meal to light it up and I can put, let's put one more like right here. Let's do a big one. Boom. And it looks pretty good. Now the string is still visible if you like specifically look for it. But if you're far away from it, you probably won't notice the string at all. And then maybe I could put, you know, one more piece of glow berry. I don't know. Just really wherever I want. It doesn't really matter. I'm going to plop it right there. And it looks pretty good. And I really like this cave. So this is our new enchanting cave. Look how good that looks. Perfect screenshot opportunity. See, this is what I was talking about earlier. It's hard for me, it's really hard for me to build on camera and on stream because I take so many retakes. It takes me a long time to figure out what design I like. But, I think this looks good. And another thing we could do is after I added that small little waterfall with the pond, I had an idea. I could easily put some of my oxalotls in there to keep them safe. So I think I'm going to grab one of my oxalotls. I have a few in a bucket. And uh, just plop them in the cave. Just to sit there, uh, there's James Pond, our good old oxalotl. But uh, we have a decent amount of oxalotls. This pond still has some. I mean, we have a few in a bucket, and I have a few in a bucket right here. And now that I have so many, I can actually start to breed them myself. And just make more oxalotls. So I think we'll put two in this cave, just as an extra little decoration. A little caves and cliffs decoration. Uh, oh no, is he stuck? Uh-oh. Let's grab that boy. Okay, where's the water? There we go. I wanted it to come out of that hole. Boom! Two little perfect cute little oxalotls and a villager. Okay, so the villagers are able to get out of the water because that one did it. But, look at this. This is absolutely perfect. I think this definitely adds a nice touch to our world. I don't know if I'm totally done decorating the outside because I'm not 100% satisfied. 
Uh, oh, well, here's the other thing. This might make it look better. This is what I wanted to do. I wanted to bone meal this place up. Add some grass, add some flowers. I think that'll make it look really nice. It'll sort of make it look a bit more like a natural cave and not like this weird, like, man-made type cave. Uh, let's do this a bit. And then also, we can do some bone meal inside. I don't have a lot of bone meal left, but we can still do a little bit. I can grab some more. Okay, this definitely looks a lot better with the bone meal. Perfect. Okay, let's see if we can, uh... I should have some bones somewhere in some of my chests for some bone meal. Bone meal always makes places look better. That's why I bone meal this entire village. You get flowers for color, you get grass for detail, and it just looks nice. Okay, here's some five bone meal. Uh, let's see. Uh, okay, here's two bones, and that should be enough bone meal total. So let's grab this, finish bone mealing this up, and it looks pretty good. So what we can do now is head back to our cave spider spawner and start to collect some XP to actually do a little bit of enchanting here and get ourselves the best armor and the best weapons in the game. Now it seems like we're only getting the red and the yellow flowers, so I might go harvest some flowers of my own in the flower forest biome and then potentially, you know, bring them back here. But uh, I think it looks good. I mean, it still doesn't look bad. Let's see, let's plop that sugar cane back, place some more bone meal. This definitely is looking really good. I'm a huge fan of this. I think this is really nice. Look at this. This cave has really come to life and looks so much better than it did before. So, now that our enchanting setup's done, like I said, let's work on getting ourselves some of the best armor and weapons in the game. So, I think what I'm going to do is just come down here and get myself only to level 30, and once we're level 30, I'll head back up to the overworld. All I really have to do is head up these stairs, and I'm pretty much right outside my house. The spawner's really close, this mine shaft was luckily really close to my house. So we're gonna get myself to level 30 and then we'll do some enchanting to get ourselves some pretty dang good armor. And look, it's really not gonna take us that long to get to level 30 at all. We'll just have to kill a few cave spiders, which really won't take too long at all. All right, let's head inside the cave and do some enchanting. Dang, it just looks so good in here. I love it so much. I'm such a fan of this. Uh, all right, so first let's start off with I guess let's disenchant all this armor because we're going to disenchant all of it anyways. And let's just see which one gives us the best potential enchant, I guess. Uh, so this will get fire protection 4, okay, protection 4, unbreaking 3, and unbreaking. So let's go for the boots because that's a guaranteed protection 4. And, well, no unbreaking 3, but we still got protection 4. Protection 4 is the main thing I'm going for. Obviously, you know, with boots I'd like feather falling. And I'd also like Unbreaking 3, but we can always get Unbreaking 3 from books or enchant some more armor in the future. Protection 4 is a lot more useful. Diamond armor has some pretty good durability, so we don't have to worry about it breaking too much. Plus, if I really am worried about the durability, I can simply get a Mending Book from one of these villagers really easily. Or, I could easily just use some of my diamonds in the chest to repair myself. So, it's really no big deal. Protection 4 is the main thing we're looking for here. So, let's go back to the mine shaft right over here and keep the enchanting up. Alright, let's see. Hopefully we get another Protection 4 this time. Uh, ba -ba boom. And what do we get? Unbreaking 3. Unbreaking 3. Hmm. Let's just hope one of these is Unbreaking 3 and Protection 4. And... Okay, well, this isn't the best, but it's also not the worst. So, I'll do this. I'll keep the chest plate for now, but once we're finished with the pants and the helmet, I might disenchant it and change it. Because Blast Protection is alright and Thorns is alright, but I'm not a huge fan. Thorns, I'm also not a huge fan of until I have Mending, because Thorns, even though it does damage to your enemies, it does actually lower the durability of your armor a lot faster than it normally would. So, until I have Mending, I try to stay away from Thorns. Uh, but, I mean, it's still nice to have, I guess. I'd also be okay with getting at least Fire Protection 4 on one of these two pieces, because, oh, well, let's go for it. I was gonna say, Fire Protection 4 is pretty useful, especially when we still have to do some exploring in the Nether. I still don't have all my Blaze Rods and all the materials I need from the End, or sorry, the Nether, and so having Protection 4, Fire Protection 4, that is, is very useful. It's also useful when mining, uh, because it, you know, deflects a lot of the damage you would normally take if you accidentally fell into lava or caught on fire. Alright, alright, uh, let's see, hopefully we get some pretty good enchantments. Uh, ooh, okay, well we got fire protection on both of these, so before we move on, let's disenchant the chest plate first and work on getting protection on this. I think what I'm gonna do is just, you know, do a big enchanting spree and I guess we'll just see what we get. Alright, let's do one final sword enchantment and I'll show off what I've gotten so far. Uh, ooh, okay, well, 
Fire Aspect 2, Sharpness 3. Not the best, but not the worst. I'll take it. Uh, so, here's what we have. We did the Protection 4 on the boots. Still Fire Protection on Breaking 3 on the leggings. The best enchantment I could get for the chest plate is Prot 4 on Breaking 3 and Thorns 2. Again, like I said, not the biggest fan of Thorns, but it's not the end of the world. And since I have on Breaking 3, it'll at least help to protect it. And then for the chest, or for the helmet, we have Protection 3. Now, I did like two other enchantments on the helmet, and I just wasn't getting anything good. So I think I'm going to hold off on enchanting any more from now, because I've been enchanting for like the past half hour. Most of it is just killing spiders, but I'm a bit enchanted burned out and so i think what i'm going to do now is we have some pretty good enchantments we pretty much almost have some of the best armor and weapons in the game i think it's time to probably combine our two pickaxes to get ourselves efficiency five and fortune three now again we still don't have unbreaking three but i can always get mending on it and we can get unbreaking you know from a villager or from another pickaxe so we can see how it is uh, boom, only seven levels. Okay, and there we go. We're definitely getting pretty stacked in this world, and uh, things are really looking good for us. Well, anyways, guys, that's all for today's video. I really hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, I thought that was pretty cool. I'm also a huge fan of this cave. If you guys have any suggestions as to how I should maybe change this cave, spice it up, maybe make it look better, let me know down in the comments below. I'm always down for hearing, uh, you know, more suggestions on my builds. I tried to also add a lot of 1.17 stuff. You know, we have the glow berries, which are, you know, pretty cool. And we also have ourselves some oxalotls. I would love to get myself some drip leaves sometime soon, but it's going to be a little bit hard to do that. First, you have to get small drip leaves from wandering traders, and the chance that they sell it is pretty low, and then you can get big drip leaves from that. So, it'll take a while before we get that, but hopefully we'll have it in the future. If you found this useful, maybe got some inspiration from this, you know, let me know down in the comments below. I'm a big fan of the enchantment setup. But like I said, that's all for this one. I really hope you guys enjoyed. My name is Jay Wisp, and I will see you guys all in the next one.